You're welcome back. This is News File. It's your most authoritative news analysis platform. And here on News File, we put Ghana first. Now, uh, let's have uh, Dr. Odor Sain also share his perspectives with us about the report of the commission and vis-a-vis uh, -vis the white paper. But it has to be stated that the president is actually empowered by law to appoint a minister responsible for this sector. And in the Intelligence Act, there's a provision for that. It does appear his role is very limited to uh, be able to report to parliament because a coordinator may not go to parliament and give a report on matters of security. Section 17. Yes, Section 17 of the Act. Yes, so um, what do you say? Taking it from where in the Bugri, you know, uh, begins that the opening statement of government is a personal indictment on the commissioners. That's um, uh, something I disagree with uh, Mr. John in Um You see, apart from the commission having a very short tenure, I must say one month, yeah. it's very short for them to do a very thorough work. The terms of reference given to the commission it's one of the unique terms of reference given to such commissions. The only one that comes to mind is the Waco Commission. Now, when you look at Article 281A, it is clear on the expected functions of a commission of such nature. And it is clear that it is saying, Article 281A is saying, a commission of inquiry set up under this article shall make a full, faithful, and impartial inquiry. Mm -hmm. This is a constitutional requirement. Right. The terms of reference given to the commission is also clear, and that is the number one terms of reference, that you should make a full, faithful, and impartial inquiry. This is a committee set up by government. They've given the terms of reference. The first one lifted from the constitution. Now, if you have submitted your report, and the government says, and I'm reading from page five mm. of government white paper, mm -hmm. the fundamental response of government to the findings of the report is that the report failed to address the first and the most critical of the terms of reference, and here I'm adding the constitutional requirement mm -hmm. of the commission mm -hmm. to make a full, faithful, and impartial inquiry into the circumstances of and establish uh, the facts leading to et cetera, et cetera. I was thinking that as soon as this statement is made and it is linked to the constitution, the report should be rejected. Completely. Completely, absolutely. absolutely because you have failed to meet your constitutional obligation. The first and most the critical. The first and the most critical, not only as per your terms of reference, but as required by the Constitution. Mm. Article 281A says so. Now, has the government got the right to determine whether they have met the standard or not? Yes, in my view, because it is the government that sets you up. It is the government that gives you the terms of reference. So the government has expressed its view. Now, let me also say that the government, in my view, never reviewed the report. The legal mandate and obligation on the government is to express an opinion and a position on the report. So I, I heard my brother saying review, but I believe that the government expressed an opinion, and it is within the powers of government They did not to do, do more than opinion, sir, because, like, and I agree with, with him, he states quite rightly mm -hmm. uh, that they did a thorough review. And when I read what they have done, they even went beyond what the commission has done to go and bring the testimonies to come and challenge some of the assertions that the, the commission has made. So in my view, it will appear as if they did a job of a court of appeal, sitting over a job that has already been done, doing a rehearing of the case. Well, um, Samson, you see, those are the background work they need to do to express an opinion. That's do is you not, know that in is history. Not do you know in, in history? Is there precedent mm -hmm. where any time there's a rejection of any point, they have gone to the evidence, the body of evidence, to use to challenge a commission, a commission's report? No, not that I know of for now. There's one here. But what I, I can say is that definitely they cannot express an opinion without reviewing. But there is no law placing an obligation on government to review a commission's report. Okay. That I want to put it on record. Mm. They have to express their opinion and their views, and they have done just that. And my view is that once they fail to meet the most critical and the fundamental terms of reference, not only as per the one given to them by the government, but the one indicated in the constitution, the report should have been rejected. That notwithstanding, 
the government has accepted parts of the report and rejected parts of the report, which is normal in my view. But I think that the fundamental problem we are faced with as a country now is we should be able to review and interrogate the power of the executive mm -hmm. or the government to review commission of uh, inquiries report. Mm. That is where we need to tackle. Because it's happened under the Jamaica Commission, it's happened under the Waco Commission, it's happened under Ghana at 50. Constitution Review Commission's report mm -hmm. that they told the whole country, okay. interrogated people, people, Ghanaians expressed their view, a constitution that belongs to us. Mm. The commission submitted their report and a white paper was issued. Majority of the uh, portions of this white paper was also rejected. Then we come to Asha, the Asha report, which was also a, a, a white paper, was also issued. So my, my thinking is that we've come to a point in our governance architecture where that bit of the constitution, Article 280 onwards, must be reviewed. Mm. If indeed we want to make significant progress, we cannot fault government, we cannot fault anybody for accepting or rejecting the commission's report. Mm. It is our making. We have given government the power to express its opinion. And indeed, in a country of rule of law, you hear both sides. You don't go and hear one side and leave government because government also has a view. So I think that we should take steps towards ensuring that we review that aspect of the constitution. That gives the power to the president to review a commission's report. I see. You, for, in the first place, you say there's no that power to review a commission's report. But having been conversant with judgments like that of the Republic versus uh, Rekubrube and Mpieni, you, you, do you come to the, the conclusion that the judge in that very seminal judgment was trying to educate all of us by going back to the history of the constitution making and coming to the point that commissions are for the purposes of finding what we have done wrong and how we can correct them and that they are for the purposes of policy moving forward and that in fact they appear the recommendations should take the nature of an article 146 decision which the chief justice chief will justice do point. and when they, they they sit and say a judge has committed some mistake or somebody has done some wrong like uh, removal of the shroud boss or removal of the electoral commission boss once they bring you the recommendation you have no discretion you must go ahead and implement it is that how you're supposed to be i i want to agree with that but you know um I, that's that judgment was given at a high court level. That's right. So then we need to go to the Supreme Court, for the Supreme Court to make a pronouncement on it. Because it seems to me that if we tow along that line, it will really help us. Because I can tell you, this will not be the last commission. <laughs> we may have more commissions coming in future, and government would express its opinion on the commission's report. We will come back to the discussion again. The fundamental solution should be, let us work towards amending that part of the Constitution. Okay. James. <laughs> mm. We're living in interesting times. Mm. Um, I have read the white paper of government and signed by the Attorney General with so much shock and disbelief. You see, what the white paper essentially has done is to say that the, the, the work of the Milshot Commission in its entirety is unconstitutional. And I think Dr. Sai has addressed that issue in a manner that I would want to associate myself with. I mean, he's referred us to the Article constitutional Article provision, mm. Article 281A, which actually says that and it comes under the heading functions of commissions of inquiry. And one says a commission of inquiry shall, shall, it is mandatory, make a full, faithful and impartial inquiry into any matter specified in the instrument of appointment. So this is a requirement. Anything short of this requirement will mean that the commission's work was unconstitutional. And so, once government comes to the conclusion in its white paper that the commission failed to make a full, faithful, and impartial inquiry into the circumstances surrounding the Ayawaso West uh, Wagomba election, which was characterized by violence, it did not lie within the power of government at all. 
to have then proceeded to accept portions of the commission's report and reject some. It didn't lie within their mandate to do so. To do that means that government then in itself has also acted unconstitutionally because it has not applied a key provision of the constitution relative to the functions of commissions of inquiry. So they shot themselves right in the foot when they arrived at that conclusion. They themselves stated that their fundamental response and objection was that the commission of inquiry did not make a full, faithful, and impartial inquiry. And that, for me, has far-reaching consequences. What it simply means is that the commission of inquiry, its chairman, Emil Schott, Professor Henry Temensa Bonsu, Patrick Achampo, former inspector general of police, and Eskofi Abochi, former dean of the law faculty of uh, Gimpa, all acted in a malicious manner. Oh. And that is what it means. <laughs> that is what it means to say somebody has not acted in good faith. No, but, that, 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 but malicious. Excuse no. me, excuse no. me, excuse me. No. What is no. the meaning of uh, 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 acting in good faith? No, but, but if you've not acted in good faith, it doesn't mean you have It is malicious. a legal phraseology. No. No. <laughs> Which even has equitable connotations to say somebody has not acted in good faith. Did the, did, the, did the white paper say it is the report which failed or it said it is the individual commissioners or but the Samson, executive Samson, secretary Samson, this of the commission? Distinction, this distinction will not fly. The report is the handiwork of the commissioners. So if you're saying that the, 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 the report fails to make an impartial, a full, and faithful inquiry, you are, in another sense, indicting the members of the commission. Oh, wow. And I'm saying that that is most unfortunate. I, I'm not qualified to Look, untie, untie the, the sandals, the lace Look. of the sandals of Henry Tamensa Bozo, for example. But are you saying they are infallible? No, nobody exactly. has said that. But the point is that if you reach that conclusion, in your opening introductory remarks about why you would accept portions of the report and reject some, Continue. you have shot yourself in the foot and have established the constitutional basis for that argument. Mm. That they could have accepted portions of the report and rejected some other portions of the report without stating with emphasis that the commission failed to make a full, faithful, and impartial inquiry. Once you do that, you disable yourself from proceeding to accept portions of the same report that you have said was not made in a faithful let's and impartial Let's pay attention to this portion uh, uh, of the white paper. And, and let's ask ourselves if this portion of the white paper is something you cannot bear with. In uh, the findings, on, in the findings, point five. Uh, 5.1, uh, electoral security. Uh -huh. The government accepts, in part, the findings of the Commission on Electoral Security as captured at paragraph 1 on page 41 of the report. The government makes the following specific comments on the findings on electoral security. And I'm leading us to a point where you may make a concession that the commission may have done something that they didn't, you know, particularly pay attention to. They say that, A, the commission's own findings in paragraph 1.6 on page 42 of the report, which the government accepts, contradicts the commission's findings in paragraph 1.8 on page 42 of the report. The government rejects the findings that the SWAT team was deployed to the electoral grounds for the purposes of electoral security. The said paragraph 1.6 provides, so this is the commission saying, and this is the finding it made. Quote, the commission further finds that the SWAT team, which was deployed to the electoral grounds of the Labawaleshi School polling station grounds, in complete disregard of the officially laid down electoral security arrangement, <coughs> sorry, where officers of the national security establishment. Then in paragraph 1.8, they say 
the commission further finds that these men were deployed to follow up on intelligence to the effect that certain arms and ammunition stored in a warehouse within the constituency and, uh, and to intercept and retrieve same. So the point they are making is that... Should we read further? The, establishing that, the contradiction clearly. Yeah. That, okay, so let's read. Let's yes, read they say yes, from the foregoing yes, paragraphs, yes, yes. Hold on. the Wait. commission finds in one paragraph that the SWAT team was deployed to the electoral grounds for electoral security. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in another paragraph, the commission finds that the SWAT team was deployed to follow up on intelligence. The evidence of the chairperson of the Electoral Commission, Mrs. That's Jean Mensa, given before the commission, yeah, which evidence was not assessed in the commission's report, confirms that there were no armed marksmen at any problem. polling stations in the Ayawasu West constituency, and the SWAT team was not at any polling station. So, Samson, what do you say about Samson, this? Samson, Samson, I'll, I'll get to that. You see, they, what they did, essentially, mm. was to pick and choose from the report, um, and even in some cases, findings of fact were simply taken out of context for their purposes and interpreted. For me, that is most unfortunate. Look, the commission adopted a certain methodology, which methodology has not been impugned anywhere in the white paper. They say this is a contradiction. No, is it a contradiction no, no, for you? No, it's not. Why is it I'm not? Building, I'm, I'm, I'm making a point mm. that the commission adopted a certain methodology. For instance, and you were counsel, you represented a client who appeared before the commission. Witness credibility was tested through cross-examination. They had a way of collating their evidence and storing the same. Mm -hmm. They used rigorous questioning techniques. Mm -hmm. And if you like, they actually, in some cases, okay, drew inferences mm -hmm. mm, in arriving at their conclusions. So if you decide for your purposes, for government's purposes, to zero in on one particular finding and treat that in isolation and not within the proper context within which that finding was made, you would run into challenges. So keep and to that, this that specific me, one. Can, you, can you keep to this mistake. specific one? James, they are the James, Sorry? please keep to this specific one. Yes. They say yes. the commission ought not be heard mm -hmm. to in one breath yes say that this was an election security Correct. operation. Yes. Then in the another breath, to say that they were there for, for the purposes of intelligence that they were following yes. up. On uh, something, if you read... They the say totality, that's a contradiction. Yes, if you read the report in its totality and analyze the evidence in its totality, mm. there are no contradictions in the conclusions the uh, uh, commission arrived at. Okay. First of all, why? The commission established in page 46 of its report, okay, that the deployment was actually done within the premises of the residence of the parliamentary candidate of the NDC, which was proximate to the electoral yeah, grounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was proximate to the electoral grounds. Yeah, that's okay. And so, Samson, what inference can you draw from this? If you decide to take out the, co the, the conclusions arrived at out of their context and state that the, the, the chairperson of the Electoral Commission testified and actually gave indication that there was no such deployment in any of the polling stations, it means that you, ha you, don't, you, you have not adverted your minds to what, what is captured under page 46 no, of the report. They found, so. they found that the, the deployment was done at the residence of the parliamentary yes. committee, which is proximate to the, 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 the polling station grounds. So whatever happens there has ripple effects. Mm. It an, uh, affects <laughs> the conduct of the election mm. at the polling station. Ripple and there is ripple. evidence in the report. Okay. The, okay. The, 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 mm. the happenings in the residence of the NDC candidate not bring to a halt the elections for close to an hour but they were at the Labawaleshi polling not station. Men there. So, mm -hmm. Samson, the, 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 what they have they done no for me is unacceptable, and I've made the point that mm. they have not even attacked the methodology that was used. Mm. And so when you do that, it's like a court of law. Evidence is elicited from witnesses. The, the, the opportunity to cross-examine was given 
proceedings were telecast live for the consumption of all. And so they did their analysis. The commission did its analysis, you know, in, 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 in taking into account the generality and the totality of evidence that they were able to elicit. And in some cases, they extrapolated. They made reasonable inferences in arriving at some of the conclusions. Let me just give you an example. Mm. For instance, on the issue of um, the unreliable quality of intelligence that the national security operatives claimed they had. Why? The commission did its analysis of the evidence that was before it and came to the conclusion that, look, the, the, the evidence was of unreliable quality because they claimed they went there to retrieve firearms, and that was the intelligence they had. Right. But no attempt whatsoever was made to retrieve any firearms. Right. Did they retrieve any firearms? It was an Did aborted they, operation. It was, why was the operation aborted? It was aborted. And why was it abo aborted? So. There was so. total lack of coordination. So. That's another the evidence matter. was not ranked, rated, and assessed properly. That's another matter. Uh, that is another matter, but it, it was part of the, the analysis they made mm. in arriving at those valid conclusions have you that read you the have white impugned. Paper at all? I've read the f white it paper in this like totality. Mm. So, Samson, okay. uh, with the greatest of... Mm. Re but but, but mm. the line of questioning mm. has even distracted... Because we have come to talk mm. about so it. Let, 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 so let, 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 me, let, me, let me also <laughs> inform you mm. that... The commission, in its work, visited the locus, the locus inco. Yeah, that yeah. is very instructive. Mm. That's okay. And so, the evidence that was elicited from witnesses had to be tested with the visit to the locus inco. For instance, when DSP Azugu testified, and in a way you have stated in the white paper that there was corroboration to the fact uh, that gunshots were fired from within the residence, okay? The commission visited the locus inco and did an assessment, the trajectory of bullets with expert assistance and advice and came to the reasonable conclusion that gunshots could not have been fired from within the residence of the, 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 uh, the, the PC, the or parliamentary fired, candidate. Or fired of into the, the air. For absolutely, that <laughs> because of the trajectory of the bullets. Mm. What they observed was that the, the, the fire, the bullets, were fired into the direction of the residents. There was no evidence whatsoever that bullets or ammunition were fired from within the residence. If they had fired from within the residence, the impact could easily have been assessed mm. and conclusions arrived at. You see, in any case, the fundamental point I want to make is that most of the conclusions and findings of the Commission of Enquiry, hinged on law. Law. Unfortunately, the report missed the point. And I am surprised, with the greatest of respect, that the Attorney General is the one who appended her signature to the white paper. Let me take the case of Honorable Sam George and the conclusions arrived at in the white paper. For instance, the Commission clearly made the finding of fact that Honorable Sam George was assaulted together with others who were found within the premises of the PC whilst they were in flight. Now they then proceeded to recommend for the prosecution of Sam George's assailant, Mohammed Suleimana. In the white paper, the government of Nanadu has stated emphatically oh, Excellency. That, that, <laughs> that 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 recommendation <laughs> is untenable in law because Suleiman Mohammed has a defense in provocation. Shocking. They didn't say defense, so valid defense of valid provocation defense of for provocation. the assault. Valid defense of provocation. This is shocking. Mm. Why is it shocking? A first year law student knows that the defense of provocation on the wrong path. will not avail somebody charged mm. with criminal assault. A first year law student knows this. Everybody knows that. We it is a basic that. principle. You know that? Of course we know Section that. 53. You know that? Yes. Something. The, Something. The, the, the Section 53 mm. of the, the, you know the criminal offenses it, act uh, of Ghana it's yeah. yeah. very it, clear yeah. the, yes. the, the defense of provocation can only be we invoked know. in cases of murder That's right. okay. so how would the attorney general of the republic 
append a signature to I'll the white you. paper I'll tell you which says that the 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 Mohammed Suleimana has a valid defense mm. in provocation. I'll tell you why. This position taken in the white paper is legally untenable. Mm. The only conclusion I can reach is that it was an attempt to shield government vigilantes. And so when Honorable Indeburi uh, said in his uh, 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 you know, submissions that the key recommendation of the commission that the SWAT team mm. at the National Security Council Secretariat be disbanded. And, 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 and this has actually been dealt with in detail in the report. I think I referred you to uh, page 45. So, so round up quickly, report, quickly for me, which, let me come which, to Which talks example. about uh, mm. uh, 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 the, the integration of police vigilantes Too much with lawyer minimal stock. training, mm. I mean, into the national security apparatus. Mm. So the, the only conclusion I can arrive at is that uh, the, the, the white paper was an attempt to shield criminal elements who found their way mm. into our national security <laughs> apparatus mm. and unleashed violence mm. on innocent uh, uh, citizens on okay. the day of the election. Thank you. So just, just hold on there. And, 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 and you say, I'm coming to Prof, but I want you to deal with that small question because okay. you wanted to respond. Yes, <clears> very much. And you see, I've opened so all so these why books. Why is he alone having the right to respond? Mind, mind, no, 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 no. The, the, the government, the government, the government ought, ought to have the right to yeah. respond why? as you much as is is possible. Just hold on. I have a lot to say, but I haven't had the opportunity to express them. Just hold on. 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 Just which is not the only the law like only in Ghana, mm. but it's the standard of criminal law all over the world. Correct. <clears throat> so in the Criminal and Other Offenses Act of Ghana, Section the provision, yeah, the provision is that the defense of provocation, which you have relied on to support this gentleman, is only available in a matter of murder. Now you have our eminent judges all writing and referring to the same thing. Maybe because the commission included Henry Mensa Bonsu, I shouldn't quote Henry Mensa Bonsu, right. oh, but this is her book. She's the authority. Yeah. She's the authority. I have it here. She's the foremost authority. She's, yes. she's okay. the authority. So she, By far. She, she confirms that yes, in this book. Correct. She does. Um, the general part of criminal law, a Ghanaian case book. Oh, yes. This is yes. volume two. I have it here. And then justice... Sir Dennis Ajay of the Court of Appeal, also writing in the Contemporary Criminal Law in Ghana, also notes that the provocation, provocation is a partial defense in murder cases. In murder cases. Mm -hmm. All of them confirm this. This gentleman, what is the basis of the provocation you are referring to? That he insulted some judge. Is that the case? If no, you read all the insulted. if you read all the case law, including those referred to by Henry Tamonsa Bonsu here, mm -hmm. determined by our court in the Court of Appeal, insult, insult, cannot constitute the ground you are seeking to of, uh, avail him. First of all, I, I think there is, it's not in doubt. And that is why the question about insult constituting legit, uh, grounds, for, uh, grounds for legitimate provocation doesn't even come up because mm. it's not in doubt that provocation, an accused person can only be availed of the defense of provocation in the trial of murder. And even with that, it's a partial defense. Mm. It can only reduce murder to manslaughter. Mm. That is not in doubt. Absolutely not in doubt. But in the same token, number one, white papers are... So this is a grave error on law. No, no, hold on. White paper, the white paper issued by government, is a policy directive. The cases are bound. Uh, Kwapon versus Ghana Cocoa Marketing Board. Frimpong Atafua versus Ghana, and it goes on and on, a plethora of cases, that the white paper is a policy directive of the government. which the po has policy directive to change the law of Ghana, no, is that no, what you're no, saying? Not, to the not law even of the law of Ghana, no, but the law to, generally to across also, the, the, the also, world. Uh, and, and which has legal ramifications. Now, per Article 88 of our Constitution mm. and case law, Supreme Court case laws, uh, a, a, a recent one being Afoku versus Attorney General, the Supreme Court has established, and the law is clear, that the Attorney General has a discretion 
the unfettered discretion to prosecute. Mm -hmm. So when a docket is before the attorney general, or a recommendation is before the attorney general, or a referral is before the attorney general, it's the attorney general who makes a determination to prosecute. There is still a raging debate, a raging agitation, ongoing agitation in our country on the attorney general and the investigative apparatus of, of, of our state to prosecute double salaries, for instance. The attorney general may decide to it's prosecute. It's a political decision. What, 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 yeah, <coughs> it, it's, it's, a, it's a decision taken, uh, arrived at, taken into account the totality of circumstances. So that, no, hold on, hold on. The attorney general has a right to determine, taking into account the totality of all the circumstances, even though uh, members of some members of parliament are alleged. So get to the point. The I'm decision, get, the attorney general's the decision. I'm laying a foundation. The attorney general's decision no, I'm the is that you can't prosecute because there is a defense of provocation. Hold on. Uh, that, so I give you that example, that white color crime. Um, so people have taken one salary here, another salary here, clear cut stealing or whatever. The attorney general is entitled to prosecute. And she may take other considerations and say, this is not a matter that I find justifiable. This is not a matter I find conscionable. This is not a matter I find to be in the public interest to prosecute. And therefore, I am not going to exercise the powers vested in me pursuant to Article 88 of our Constitution to prosecute. That's not what so she I said saying, here. In this white paper, mm -hmm. the, attorney, the attorney general and the defense of provocation as raised in this white paper is not in the strict sense of the defense of provocation as you have rightly enunciated pursuant to Section 52 of the Criminal and Other Offenses Act. It is the Attorney General taking into account the totality of the circumstances of the events of 31st January 2019, given that Sam George had been seen clearly mm. as some aggressor uttering words of insult to a security official. So he says it's a policy a decision. Yeah, it's a policy and the policy no, decision the is that no, the, the policy decision is that there's a policy decision to override the law and to establish a new law or sort of policy. Something. That's, are, let, that's let me come in when let me you get insulted, you. you are justified Can to I slap. No, no, no. That what that, else? No, 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 hold on. No. That that that, that one something. Listen to me, Kev. That mm. one the attorney general has a right, a discretion to determine whether to prosecute. Undoubted. Undoubted. Two, that there are cases where the bagging and so many other circumstances where there is a clear Section case of... Section 35 of the there, Court Act yeah, is there, sure, we know. That there's a clear case of crime before the Attorney General. But when the Attorney General, even in the national interest, public interest, I give you, I give you, a, I can give you examples of... That's not what uh, the what Attorney it, General has said here. What I the am, Attorney General has said here is that mm -hmm. the government does not <coughs> accept the Commission's recommendation that Mohammed Suleimana must be prosecuted for the offense of assault to wait the slapping of the Honorable Member of Parliament, Mr. Samuel Nete George, on the basis that the, uh, on the, basis that the Commission at paragraphs no, 6.1 yeah, exactly. and 6.2 on page 55 of the report accepted the facts which led to the assault, which is insult, <laughs> on the Honorable Member of Parliament, Mr. Samuel Nete George, which facts support a valid defense, defense of provocation not for, a valid the, legal for the said defense, assault. Not a assault. valid legal defense. What a else valid, can it be? A valid defense of provocation. A valid defense, you may critique the, the language, oh. you may critique the use of the word okay. provocation, okay. but okay. I'm saying to you that mm. the Attorney General's conclusion mm. that there's a valid defense of provocation is not in the intent of the four corners of the criminal laws of our country that is entitled to the legal defense of provocation. But what else? That, no. What else that if you take the totality of the circumstances, the gentleman was provoked. But granted, security, granted, 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 that, granted that this is to say that the gentleman is entitled to a defense in provocation. Granted. Is it the attorney general who must be saying that? Or you prosecute the person and allow them to put their defense? The attorney general will be prosecuting for the state, will not be a defense attorney. Correct. So what's the so, point? So let me ask you a simple criminal. question. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a contentious matter we can go on and on Why about. does the Attorney General of, not allow the language, government, not the Attorney General no. here, why does the government not allow the court to say Mohammed has a valid defense? Yes, but do you agree with me that there are circumstances or situations where the Attorney General can take a criminal matter to court for the court to make a pronouncement, for the accused person to mount his or her defense, and yet 
the attorney general can come to the conclusion this is not a matter that I will prosecute for okay. giving reasons. Thank you. Do, yes. do, do you Pro agree Pro to that? Jampo. The attorney general okay. has so, that discretion. So, so, yes, she's not prosecuting so for ignore, salary. ignore all the <laughs> yes. legal, legal <laughs> gymnastics. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's sorry. No sorry, it's okay. Gentlemen, 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 gentlemen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Please, let's respect our discerning, our discerning viewers and listeners. Thank you, thank you. Gentlemen, gentlemen, James. James, James, sorry. James, 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 and uh, sorry, yes, All Prof. Right. Um, Samson, mm -hmm. I, I think um, don't put me amongst two extreme partisan lawyers. Oh, I don't want to be a proceed. Movie. Yeah, they, they take all the time. I'm looking at then, you with the flag on your please, um, on no, your no. shoulders. So they, they've, they've said <laughs> they've said so many things okay. and taking all the time. Okay, I want to speak my mind. Please do. Okay, and mm. I'm speaking my mind purely out of political thoughts and political thinking. Mm. I don't care about what the law says. The laws were made by human beings, and they cannot usher us into a regime of robots. We must interrogate to see whether they make sense or whether they serve the interest of people. First of all, mm -hmm. vigilantism um, has been a challenge in Ghana, mm. um, particularly um, during the Fourth Republic. I mean, the first time we, um, were, we got caught in that quagmire was um, um, in 2001, when there was the first time that power was democratically changing hands from one regime to the other. People could not distinguish between the change of government and overthrow of government, as in you two are buying and you are buying. And so people um, who felt uh, their government had been elected took the laws into their own hands, and they did so many things. Um, that um, were very bad and threatened to relapse our democracy. Since then, we've had the issue of vigilantism um, plaguing um, several aspects of our electoral politics and you know, all that. And I must say that I was very happy and I indeed commended the president for being the first person to set up a commission of inquiry to probe or to look into the activities of vigilantism you know, in the history of Ghana's Fourth Republic and then also He's not done only that, but he's gone out of his way to also initiate a legislation against the phenomenon. Yeah. And I think it's something that is um, commendable. Don't say yet, uh, yeah, yes, let me finish. <laughs> but I hope that we as a people and the president and also the political elites around him are truly committed to the fight against um, vigilantism. Because in my view, having a commission of inquiry submitting its report and then also having a legislation that outlaws vigilantism would be meaningless if there is no political will and commitment to fighting it. There are so many legislations in our statute books that are not implemented, mm -hmm. and so so many things happen. And so, in my view, having a law against it would be meaningless unless the political elites are themselves committed to fighting uh, you know, vigilantism. Now, coming back to the report and, and the work of the Commission of Enquiry, I, I think I've listened to what they've said. I have my own view, and I'm sure you are, you, are, you are going to allow me to articulate my views too. In my view, it is not too polite um, for the government to describe their work as being um, partial, um, I, I find it difficult to come to terms with that description. And I agree with Dr. Asai that if they failed to do their work partially, then up in issue, the work should have been rejected. Okay, and with the greatest of respect to whoever authored the, the, the white paper, I have looked at the white paper, I've looked at um, the terms of reference, I've assessed their work. I don't think we can, we can comfortably describe what they did as being partial. I, I don't think so. Um, I, I think that they are also human beings. They are fallible human beings. They are prone to uh, mistakes and all that. But the way to, we describe their work, uh, we've described their work as they failing to faithfully and impartially, you know, discharging the duty that was reposed in them. I don't think the, the caliber of people who, no one who constitute, no, please, when you are talking, please. No one the caliber of people who constituted um, the, um, the, the, the commission of inquiry were not, were, are not mean personalities. Okay, these, in fact, these are no party food soldiers. 
These are not these are competent people who have no autopilot partisan interest. And so I I I am a bit um, worried. If you, I don't know whether you've spoken to them, but I'm sure they are not speaking against this out of courtesy and respect to the president, but they are not taking the comments lightly. Why is it that? Prof, 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 why is it? Why is it? I'm a researcher, so you can't ask me that. I know what I'm talking about. Why is it? Why is it that we'll be doing what some may say is the is the faulty binary projection in thinking? That once I say something is not white, then it's black. I say you have not, the report is not faithful, it's not uh, truthful, it's not uh, impartial. How unfaithful that, have and I how said, untruthful. Have I, by, by saying so, said it is partial? No, no. It I, is untruthful. Um, Samson. It Samson, is unfaithful. How unfaithful and how untruthful is the report? We can disagree with some portions of the, of the, of the work. But the point is, um, to describe it right from the word go, as unfaithful and untruthful. They did not say I so. Think, well, it said the work, they failed to discharge their, their work in a faithful and an impartial They manner. failed to do the, ref, the, the report. The report failed. Yes. Yeah. So it failed to do the well, most, the report, the the report most critical, was, yeah, the the most critical was, term of reference. The, uh, the, the report was uttered by human beings. Okay. okay. The report didn't originate it's by, on its own, and uh, mm. it was uttered by human beings. So, and so it is important that um, we make this point that if we will continue to set up commissions of inquiry, and then after their findings, we'll behave as if we knew the facts before we set up the commission, <laughs> then it is not important for us to have commissions of inquiry set up. And we must, we, I, I agree with you, the government may have the mandate to scrutinize the report of any commission of inquiry. But we must, as a people, begin to rethink that mandate that government exercises any time it sets up a commission of inquiry. Because in my view, if we don't take care, we may be promoting, we may be in the discharge of that mandate, we may also be finding impunity. There's been several um, instances where commissions of inquiry have been set up, and then government will issue white, white paper to counter some of the findings and all that. Um, I'm not saying that we should necessarily swallow everything into to even if we disagree but we should find a way a fine balance or a fine way to ensure that um, we would not be going regularly on that target otherwise then you may just be windows dressing a, a problem by just putting up a commission knowing very well that while their findings i would always have my way in counteracting it and then let me go back to one specific issue that that was a, a bit worrying it has to do with um, the guy who slapped um, um, St. George. Yes. I, I think that um, we must advise people on this. You see, no matter how right you are, you do not have to behave in a certain way towards a security officer or somebody who is holding a gun. Okay, you may be dead before the person <laughs> will be found <laughs> guilty. No, no. You may be dead before the person yeah. may be found guilty. You may not know the state of mind of that person at that time. Okay, that's notwithstanding. I think that you're saying that if a security man is abusing my rights, I should shut up. Because I'm not saying. I'm not saying. I'm not saying, I'm not saying, no, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying, mm. be careful in the way you comport yourself. You know, before a gun world. But person. that's not how our forebears built this country. Well, that is not they how. Yeah, them. yeah, but I'm saying that you should be careful. I'm not mm. saying you shouldn't react. I'm saying you should. Okay. You should approach your but attitude I, towards that person with a bit trepidation, mm. so that. You don't. You may be dead before the person may be found guilty, and it's important that I make this point. That's okay. notwithstanding, I am saying down, that they can I, you. I, I am saying that. Don't don't say anything for me. Keep quiet and let me finish. Not for you. <laughs> I, and, I, and then I'm saying that it's the commission that did the work worked like a court, and in my view, if they make a recommendation that somebody has to be prosecuted. It is up to the person, the government, in my view, goofed in exonerating that person, okay, the person who slapped, you know, Sam George. You should have allowed the flow of things. Let it go to court. Let the person go before the judges and say that I acted on provocation. If they, in the wisdom of the judges, they feel... They you cannot find, say that in the court because it's not a defense. Well, but the point is that to exonerate him, and like you're saying, you you can say that well because of xyz we are even filing 
we are not interested in you know, you know, prosecuting the matter you know, in court. That can be done. But to generate to, to the said, person in the white paper, that's in my mean. view, creates an impression, you see, that uh, government is not so much interested and committed to the fight against you know, vigilantism and I mean, it is worrying. Well, so my point is, my point is, no, no. My no, no, no. We, we need mm. to help he him. We need to help him. You see, he's if you vigilante. are going to prosecute, it is government that will do the prosecution. That's government right. will go to court. That's why they I should, said this they, they, is they, they, they more or less sure, a political yeah, decision. Yeah, they should be sure that they will prosecute to secure maybe conviction or okay. something of that sort. Okay. Now, if the evidence currently cannot support the prosecution, mm -hmm. it will be extremely difficult for them to maybe go to court. And so that's so, why you, so you support, that, you support the view that... Even. So you no, support no, 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 the view that... that I, no, what, what I'm saying okay. is that it is a creature of our law. Yeah. Because even even if we'll they fight. are going to implement mm -hmm. the recommendation, is this same... Okay, okay so don't take Prof's time. He's okay, asking you the question which should end this discussion here. So you are saying that government... You support the position that there's a valid defense of provocation. No, no, no. what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that it lies within the right of government to do a thorough a analysis. valid defense of provocation in, 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 in this, this case in, in is there a valid defense of, no, please see, please there, there cannot be legal or non-legal no, 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 it is a is matter that, of legal legality oh, but I think so it shouldn't be no, legal but no. we, we know within the law it cannot be a valid Something. defense okay it, so what i'm saying then what i'm saying is that it lies within the right of government and attorney general to do an analysis of the issues and check whether they will be able to prosecute it that i agree so we are importing capriciousness in this matter Okay. Yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry, James, right. James, hold so, it, hold it. No, right. view, yes, please proceed, view, proceed. In proceed. My view, proceed. Mm. In my candid view, I mm. think that particular part of the report that mm. is generated, and this guy was not politically, you know, wise thing to do, because okay. it creates an impression that um, you, are, you are supporting or you are finding impunity, and he mm. slapped him and all that. I mean, it's not something that we want um, to promote in our body Country. politic, and I think it's something that government would have to take a second look at Generally, um, in your own analysis, I read your report, government rejected about 59% of, of, of the report. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm just, so majority of the findings were rejected. And I've just been thinking about, if we would set up a commission of inquiry and then reject or accept only 41% of its report, then are we serious? No, really? If government, yeah, if government knows <laughs> why, all the facts, no, if, no, if government knows all the oh, facts why? and knows all the issues, why? then in my view, it should go why? ahead to do whatever it wants to do. I mean, like while the commission was in, in a, a, even in, if in the forty one, please, please don't, don't be interjecting. Me, don't be don't be interjecting. Let, let me let me let me show to him. <laughs> you see this constitution <laughs> review report. This Correct. constitution review report. Do you remember what you said about it in opposition about government the white paper. government white paper? The white paper is Meanwhile, true. do you know how much of this was accepted by the government? Almost 90% of yeah. this was accepted. Yeah. And yet, and yet you, you that said the government's white paper. that should not be done. Yes. Well, I don't know what you're talking about, Samson, mm. but you know, this we are just trying to deal with the issues fairly. Mm. I accompanied the then candidate, Akufuado, in 2012 to, be, to appear before this commission of inquiry. Mm. Oh? And it was a closed door session. I know his views. I heard his views. In the same token, in the same light, check the president's public utterances on this constitutional review. In fact, three months ago, civil society organizations paid a ketchup call on the president, a working visit. I don't know if you were, if you were, if you were there. And, and the issue, you were there. Oh, good. And the issue of the constitutional review commission was put before him, and he expressed his views. Find out what his views are. Okay, thank you. You may be surprised about his views. Mm. Yes. He well, before this one, he has been talking about overhauling the constitution. Well, anyway. so so the right. point is mm. the point I'm trying to make is that um, we must rethink the mandate of mm. the president okay. in uh, giving um, or giving opinion on white papers, you mm. know, and then uh, white papers that virtually would reject almost mm. everything uh, contained in a report. Okay. Then it becomes an exercise in futility to mm. put in place a commission to um, um, make um, fact find, you know anything and i think we shouldn't be wasting money <laughs> on set commissions mm. if we know that at the end of the day we would have um they will have our way by giving opinions that counteract um findings and like i like the fact that you brought this as an example yeah. over 90 percent mm. of the uh, recommendations of the constitutional review commission uh, report was accepted only 10 percent <laughs> and uh, yeah. you know uh, um, um, were rejected but this one you have 59 percent if you do the approximation, yeah, fifty nine percent being rejected. And I'm saying that oh. if we if we continue on that tangent, 
then at the end of the day, we anybody who doesn't want to resolve any problem will quickly say, um, in the heat of the moment, I have instituted a commission of inquiry. But then we'll go behind the scene to say that, well, by the, at the end of the day, they can have their say. But I, I'm going to have my way by issuing a white paper to counteract um, whatever findings um, there are in or recommendations there are in, in, the, in the report. And let us, copy, let us copy from best practices. You were Which citing, are the best listen, wait, you were citing a lot of um, examples of white papers that have rejected, white papers that have, I know of all those white papers that have, have rejected um, work of uh, recommendations of commissions of empire. You can talk about 1995. Mm -hmm. um, Rollins calls <coughs> the some of people were Yimo Osei Ibrahim Adams, and who were investigated, and some, some um, um, recommendations were made about them, adverse findings made about them. Rollins issued a white paper to counteract. Okay, since then, there's been several commissions of inquiry, mm -hmm. and there's been several white papers. And I'm saying that if we will go that on that tangent, then it will just create. Um, an impression, you know, in the minds of people. Anytime you put in place a commission of inquiry, I mean, people will say, well, what would they do? They would have their say, but then the government will have its way. And it, it, it doesn't inure to the benefit mm. of our country as we try to do things or seek ways and means of doing things Okay. Right. In the Constitution Review uh, report uh, at page 318, they made a couple of things. I want to read just one of the statements they said. They said Article 280, which allows a person aggrieved by the findings of a commission of inquiry to appeal to the Court of Appeal, does not expressly endorse or prohibit the initiation of criminal proceedings based on the findings. Then they said at paragraph 2111 that the commission finds that public interest will be best served if the adverse findings of a commission of inquiry can be, can be used mm -hmm. as grounds to initiate prosecutions. Mm -hmm. However, this should be subject to the outcome of an appeal process okay. initiated by the person aggrieved from the findings of a commission of inquiry. This is what the government okay, accepts. Okay, okay. yes. okay. The, 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 the no, government, government accepts the Constitution Review Commission's recommendation under paragraph 1171 and 178 that the amendment of the Constitution to provide that prosecution may follow from the findings of commissions of inquiry set up under the Constitution. So, so if we are done the amendment, yes. we will not yeah, be discussing no, 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 this. No, 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 okay, so thank you. Thank you. That's the position now. Yeah, 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 it's the position now. It's the position now. We take a break here. We'll be right back. And when we return, unfortunately, we have two other topics. We have to go to those other topics. If you know my panelists have been saying no, that to today we should just discuss this matter and go away. Um, I don't know what the production will say because my instructions are that we terminate this right here. Okay, I'm told an absolute no. When we return, we shall find some other platform to have a discussion going forward. I hear all of you saying no. We take a break here. We'll be right back.